All right, you guys, this problem looks familiar. Um, I think we had one already in this review. So do you think there's gonna be one on the exam? I think there might be. Okay, so 48, Ella crosses a river when she drives from her house to the beach. The graph of a function d of h equals 40 times the absolute value of h minus 1.25 shows Ella's distance from the river D in miles after T hours. The domain of the function is zero is less than or equal to H is less than or equal to 2.5. The graph shows her entire trip. All right, before we start to answer any questions, let's just, there's a lot of information. Let's just make sense of it, shall we? Um, I'm going to zoom in on this graph a little bit so we can just understand what we are looking at. Okay, so what's happening is Ella is, what is she doing again? She crosses a river when she drives from her house to the beach. All right, so our x-axis, this is time passing, okay? So as time passes, she's driving. So at the start of her trip, she is up here, what are we counting by? 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm just gonna go ahead and write in a little 50 as a reminder. Okay, so she is 50 miles away from, I'm gonna tell you from the river and I'll explain that in a second. Oh yeah, 50 miles, cause this is right here. It tells us where it is distance from the river. So at the beginning of her drive, she is 50 miles from the river. As time passes, do you see how her distance to the river is getting smaller? After this much time, she's only 30 miles from the river. After an hour, she's 10 miles from the river. At this time, she's zero miles from the river. So this is when she's at the river. But what happens is she crosses the river on the other side and she starts driving away from the river. Well, as she drives away from the river, her distance from the river increases. So as she drives away from the river on the other side, now she's getting further away from the river. And at this point right here, when she stops driving, this is when she's at the beach, all right? So at the beginning of her trip, she's 50 miles from the river. So she's driving, 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 driving. Here's where she crosses the river and she continues to drive past the river. And at this point, she's at the beach. Okay, so our first question is, over what interval is Ella's distance from the river decreasing? So when we're looking at a graph, decreasing parts of graphs are when we read graphs left to right, when it looks like it's going downhill. So this part would be increasing. Do you see how from the left to the right, it's going up? So that would be increasing. This is the part that's decreasing from left to right, we are going downhill. Now, anytime that they ask us for intervals, we do this in terms of our X axis. In this case though, it is an H axis. So instead of, um, Instead of X's, I'm gonna use H's, but it's that same axis. So we are decreasing from here all the way to here. So we wanna know what are these values on our H axis? Well, this is a zero. Um, this is, what is this one right here? What is this axis even counting by? I can see one, two spaces gets me to one, another two gets me to two. So we're counting by halves. So if I count by half, count by half, count by half, this is actually a 0.25. So that's a 1.25. So that's kind of a tricky um, axis to work with. So we just have to really pay attention to those details. So we are decreasing from zero to 1.25. What does that look like in terms of how we have to write our answer? Well, zero is less than or equal to our H. That's just our X variable is less than or equal to 1.25. Not 1.125, 1.25. That is a decreasing interval. 
So again, these intervals that we identify are based off of the x-axis or your horizontal axis, which was an H for hours in this case. But I think you guys would agree, yeah, it's decreasing right here. Like you can find it on a graph, but then we just have to go straight down to our axis and say, all right, that's from here to here, from zero to 1.25. Oh, and I wrote it in the wrong spot. This goes right there. All right, next question. How many miles, how many miles does Ella to the beach? Well, we're missing a word, aren't we? How many miles does Ella drive to the beach? So remember we started out up here, she's 50 miles from the river. After 1.25 hours, she crosses the river. So she's driven 50 miles so far. And then she drives across the river on the other side and those mileage increase and she's back up at that 50 again. So she drove 50 miles to get to the river and then 50 miles past the river. So how many miles is she driving to the beach? 50 miles to the river plus 50 miles past the river. She is 100 miles from the beach. Oh, I sure hope that was a, a long trip for her. This must be an exciting beach. All right, what is the average rate of change over the interval 0 0.5 is less than or equal to h is less than or equal to 1? All right, you guys know the drill. I want you to circle average rate of change. And what word are we going to write? Slope. So we're going to find the slope. Now, to find slope, you need two ordered pairs. Um, and our ordered pairs... The interval they give us, those are the x's, or in this case, the h's. They did switch the variable on us, but that is going to be the x's in our ordered pairs. Now we just need to get the y values. Um, we could type the function into our calculator because they did give us the function up above. Um, but I think it's, since we have a graph, why don't we just look at our graph and find where these ordered pairs are? So what that means is we're gonna to go to a 0 0.5 on the x-axis and figure out what the y value is in our function. So we said our x-axis was counting by 0.5s. So if I go over 0 0.5, now I have to go up to the function, I can see that that's at a 30. So I am gonna fill in a 30 right here. Now let's go, oops. now let's go to where our x-axis is a one, so I'm gonna go over, oh, here's a one, go up to our function, that is, our function has a value of 10. Okay, when you've got your two ordered pairs, average rate of change, find the slope, we're just doing slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our y2 minus y1, we're gonna do 10 minus 30 over x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0 0.5. Um, yeah, never mind. All right, so 10 minus 30 is negative 20. 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. And then negative 20 divided by 0 0.5. How many 0.5s fit into a negative 20? Quite a few of them. You actually have negative 40 of them. So our average rate of change is negative 40. All right. Whew, look at this one. Last question, by the way. Write the equation for the piecewise function. All right, so what we have are two pieces of two different lines. We've got this line over here, and it cuts off right there, and we have this line over here. I am going to add in, because I do think that this was meant to have arrows on either end. And then I'm going to put a circle right there. Okay, so why don't we identify some key information for each line? And by that, I just mean, what's the slope? What's the y-intercept? So starting with this line here on the left.
the y-intercept, if we go to the y-axis, I can see the y-intercept is at a 1. So y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 1. And then what's our slope? If you go to the next exact point and count the rise over the run, we can see that this line has a slope of 1. So we can go ahead and write that equation. y equals, um, our slope is 1, so 1x or x and our y-intercept is 1, x plus 1. Now, what we notice is that we do not have the entire line. It stops right here. We get cut off. So why don't we sketch in a vertical line where that cutoff is? This is happening when x is a 2, that vertical line x equals 2. So what a piecewise function does is we have one function, but we only want part of it. So if this is our cutoff, is this line x plus 1 on the left side of that, two, that y x equals 2 or on the right side of that x equals 2? See how we have the line on the left side? Here's where all your x's are less than 2. So we want our line y, y equals x plus 1 um, for just all the x's that are less than one. Now, because I did put a closed circle there, I'm gonna go ahead and say less than or equal to. So this vertical line, x equals one, over on this side, these are when all your x's are less than one, and this side of your line are when all your x's are greater than one. So we're gonna have this line when x's are less than one, and this line when x's are greater than one. Okay, so we need another equation. We need the equation for this line over here on the right. We need a slope and a y-intercept. So we switch my colors. Okay, so now let's talk about this line. So first, let's try to find our slope. Um, I'm not loving this line just because of the, it's kind of fuzzy looking, um, but I'm going to just pick two points. I'm going to pick this one and this one. Not perfectly exact points, but I think that's where they're supposed to be. Um, let's do our rise over our run for our slope. Now we do have a downhill line, so we can predict a negative slope. Start with a point on the left. Our rise, we're going down two, and our run over one. So our slope is a negative two over one or negative two. Now, in order to write the equation of the line, we also need our y-intercept. So the thing, though, is this line doesn't go to the y-axis. It stops right here. So what we do is we consider, well, what if we did get it to the y-axis? So if we continued the line, we know our slope is negative 2. And if I just continued the line just for the purpose of finding the y-intercept, do you guys see how we're hitting the y-axis right there? So that y-intercept is up there at a 7. All right, so the equation of this line, I'm going to add it to our piecewise function up here, y equals, we have a slope of negative 2. That's going to go with our x. Our y-intercept is 7, so plus 7. But then it's not the whole line. I'm going to go ahead and erase what we just drew in because that's not really part of the line. It's really just the part of the line that's on the right side of our cutoff here, this x equals 2. Well, on the right side is when x is greater than 1. Now, do you guys notice how these two kind of cut off at the same point right here? We had a piecewise function earlier in the review, and I talked about how one of the lines had a closed circle and the other one had an open circle. And the closed circle is the one we see It kind of covers up the open circle. Um, because this top function, I gave that a closed circle, this one would have to have an open circle. They can't both equal one. Only one can be equal to one. So we're going to say that x is greater than one. And there's our piecewise function. So Again, piecewise functions, um, 
you just have two functions, right? Here's a line, here's a line. So we got the equation for this line, finding the slope and y-intercept. We got the equation for this line, looking for a slope and y-intercept. And then we found where that cutoff line is, that x equals, oh my gosh, did you guys see what I did? I wrote x equals two, and then over here, I use all these ones. All of these ones should be two. So instead of redoing the whole problem, you guys are gonna forgive me and say, oh, Mrs. Youngberg, we didn't write down what you wrote down. We knew it should be a two. Or if you didn't know it should be two, you say, oh, yep, I get it. On the left side is x is less than two, to the right of the line is when x is greater than two. I don't know how I got that one in my head, so I do apologize. That means we have to make some changes over here as well. Up in our function, when we said x is less than or equal to one, those should be two. So, so sorry about that. That's a two, that's a two. There's our function. Oh boy. Okay, so we've got one function, we found the slope and y-intercept. We have another function, found the slope and y-intercept. We've got this line at x equals two that cuts our line off. So what we do is we say we have this function, but do we want the, which side of this vertical line is our function? Is it on the left side or the right side? It's on the left side. So this line we have for all the x's less than or equal to two. And then this other line is on the right side, which is greater than two. So this is our line, but just for where the x's are greater than two. And that's how a piecewise function works. You have pieces of different functions put together as one.